We've never had such an ability to record ourselves. We can record ourselves so easily and publish it places, Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, or whatever other platforms are available when you are watching this video. But have you ever recorded yourself and listened to yourself speaking back and been surprised by what you hear? Have you ever compared the voice that you hear when you speak to the voice that speaks back to you in a recording and been surprised? Why do our voices sound different in recordings? Are we just hearing things? Or is there something that we can explain? Today, we're going to talk about it. First of all, you're not crazy if you think that your voice sounds different in a recording. It actually does sound different in a recording when compared to how you hear it when you speak. But why? Well, first, let's talk about what sound is and how it travels. Sound is vibrations. All musical instruments create vibrations in some way to create sound. And we can create vibrations. And we do with our vocal cords. We can shape those vibrations with our mouth, with our tongue and our teeth to create words. There are two ways that we describe the qualities of a vibration, generally. There's amplitude or the height or the strength of a vibration, and there's frequency or how often it's vibrating, the speed at which it vibrates. So amplitude is the strength and frequency is the speed. Amplitude determines how loud a sound is. The greater the amplitude, the greater the volume the sound will be. And frequency determines the pitch. The faster it vibrates, the higher it will sound, and the slower it is, the lower it will sound. To change the pitch of something, I need to change the size. Smaller things will vibrate faster. On the ukulele, I can play an open string, and then I can play the same string, but hold down certain points on the fretboard. That's going to make the part of the string that vibrates shorter. making it sound higher. I can also do some tuning by changing these. Things that are tighter will vibrate faster and things that are less tight will vibrate slower. This is also true for wind instruments. The trombone is a brass instrument, which means that, well, it's made of brass typically, but more importantly, the vibration is created by the lips of whoever's playing it. They buzz like this. Then, if you want to make a noise, you put the instrument to the buzz. And if you want to make a lower noise, you make the passage through which that air, those vibrations travel through, longer. You make the instrument longer by using, on the trombone, a slide. I can also change the pitch by adjusting how tight my lips are. Which means that I can get a range of notes without even moving the slide. Sound needs a medium to travel through. Most of the sounds that we hear travel through the air. And those vibrations cause our eardrums to vibrate. And those vibrations are transmitted to our brain via an electrical signal, and that is translated by our brains into sound information. Something needs to vibrate in order for sound to be transmitted. If you were able to survive in the vacuum of space where there are very, very few molecules, not enough to transmit a wave, you would have Sound waves in the air make the molecules that make up the air vibrate. The molecules vibrating is what allows the wave to be transmitted. Over time, the wave gets less strong. The amplitude, or how strong or how loud the vibration is, gets smaller until it eventually stops. Why? Well, the molecules actually absorb a little bit of heat energy. Humans are nowhere near sensitive enough to detect this with our bodies, but there is a small transference of heat. Each time the vibration happens, it's losing a little bit of that heat energy until the vibration stops. This transfer of energy is what causes sound waves to have 
a limited range, which allows us to be able to answer our question. Why does our voice sound different in a recording? When you speak, your eardrums pick up the vibrations in two ways. The first way is through the air. As you speak, you create vibrations in the air, waves through the air, which your eardrums can detect. But there's another way that those vibrations can travel. Let me show you. I need you to try something with me. I'll need your hand. Okay. Hum. Hum with me. Mm, go on. Hum with me. Mm. Okay. Now place your hand gently on your neck. Mm. You can feel it vibrating. The vibrations are starting from our vocal cords. That's what we're using to create vibrations, which is what we use to create speech. But we don't just feel them in our neck. Feel your jaw and hum. Mm. I can feel my jaw vibrating. Mm. What about the back of your head? Mm. Oh, I can feel it vibrating in the back of my head too. Okay, so I know that I can certainly feel my head vibrating when I speak or when I hum. That's because when I speak, it's not just the air that's vibrating. My vocal cords and things are making my body vibrate as well. My body, which is made up of bones and flesh and all sorts of things, which are mostly made up of water. Water absorbs vibrations faster than air does. There are more molecules and so it takes more energy for a wave to push through them. As sound travels through our bodies, the higher frequencies lose energy a lot sooner than lower frequencies. Each vibration loses a little bit of energy. So if a wave has faster vibrations, it will run out of energy faster. Lower frequencies vibrate more slowly, so they lose energy more slowly than higher frequencies. Water makes things sound different. The higher frequencies run out of energy sooner, so you hear a lower sounding sound, or a sound that sounds like you've turned up the bass. Which is why when you turn up the water, it sounds different. If you can feel the vibrations in the back of your head, they're certainly traveling through this area, making our eardrums vibrating. Now, this part of the video, I've actually adjusted the EQ so that it sounds pretty close to what I'm hearing in my head which is different to what you've been used to for the rest of the video. It's a little different. It's a bit deeper. I've taken out some of the higher frequencies and boosted some of the lower frequencies, which makes it sound very similar to what I'm hearing when I speak. So when you listen back to your voice on a recording, you are hearing more higher frequencies than you are used to when you speak and you hear your voice in real time because you are not listening to your voice through your body, which cuts out some of those higher frequencies. This might make it sound a little tinnier, a little higher pitched. And some people are quite self-conscious about this and don't like the way they sound in a recording. It's the way that other people actually hear us. And that thought can be a little bit unsettling, but nobody else has noticed it. It's just you who are noticing this difference because the way that you hear your voice is unique. Nobody else gets to hear your voice the way you do. And I think that's pretty cool. I was a little uneasy as well when I first started making videos, but several hundred videos on YouTube later, I'm pretty desensitized to it now. And I've come to accept that that's just how my voice is. And that's just how your voice is as well. And it's nothing to be worried or ashamed about. You're the only person who gets to hear your voice from the perspective of you. And I think that's pretty special. So keep communicating clearly and with kindness. Let your voice be heard. Thank you for watching this video. I think the fact that when you hear your voice, it is unique to how everybody else hears your voice is pretty cool. If you learned something in this video or if you enjoyed it, I'd love to know in the comments below and subscribe for more pretty cool things. Thanks again, take care, stay curious and we'll see you next time.